All right, so the word that the Lord had me um, put together today is about our authority in Christ. And I know I'm speaking to the choir here. I know a lot of us know who we are, that you, you understand our authority. But um, this was the word he gave me, and I'm going to teach on it. And um, understanding our authority is absolutely important in order for our prayers to work, in order to have breakthrough. You know, we are in a critical time. You know, we've been having marvelous prayer time on Wednesday. If you can come out, come on out. I mean, it's been amazing. And we have all different people teaching, and then we pray. And, um, you know, prayer changes things. We are a church that believes in prayer. We believe that, that we can, you know, speak to that mountain and command it to fall into the sea. But it's not without effort, energy of Holy Spirit. It's not without the power of God upon our lives and our faith. And, you know, and today, you know, Xavier, you were just so on my mind during worship. And, you know, it's not just Xavier, but you have, the, you know, you all in the Gen Z, right? The millennials, all generations, but you have a conquering spirit. And what the world wants to do is, is overlay that spirit of death, hopelessness, and despair over the conquering spirit that God has in you and has in the Gen Z. And so we have to learn from a young age how to pray. It's not boring. It's something that we have to understand. We have authority. We, we have the spirit. We have the resurrection life, the DNA of God, Christ Jesus within us. Resurrection life. And so <clears throat> communism fell. And I shared this on Wednesday. And uh, I was reading this <clears throat> from this book, uh, John... Macmillan, I think, I don't remember his name, but it was talking about the authority in Christ. And communism fell as a high-ranking communist Chinese military officer was being interviewed. And the newsman asked him, what was the cause of the fall of communism in Russia, as you see? And he answered, I know what happened in Russia. It was the Christians, and it's not going to happen to China. That's what he thinks. But, but listen, that's what, that, you know, prayer brought down the Berlin Wall. But it's not just prayer, it's knowing our authority. America needs prayer. New Jersey needs prayer. We're not wasting our time just saying prayers. We're not buck shooting. We are aiming with the arrow, and we are hitting the bullseye as we pray. So when John and Cheryl and Peter mentioned that they're coming, it's every week, you know, we're going to be in a different city, and we sent out where, um, each city where we're going to be. It's praying for the state. It's all the counties, the different churches in the counties, praying for our state. Right? We need to pray for Governor Murphy. Listen, the enemy is the enemy. Governor Murphy is not. But Governor Murphy is not walking in the righteousness of Christ Jesus. He wants to make New Jersey an abortion sanctuary. That is not okay. And we are called the ecclesia. We are called the church to take a stand and to pray and to take authority over this thing. Again, God loves him. Now, when I say this, please understand, I'm not saying we're going to take him out or kill him or anything like that. We're speaking about a spiritual dimension that the scales, we want the scales on our eyes to be removed. We ha Listen, the church has gone too long with being silent. And that's why the church, the, the, well, that's why we need to, you know, press and believe God and take a stand. The lie has been that the church cannot say anything about what's going on. That's a lie. When you read the Bible, the, the kings always spoke to the prophets and the seers. And so we need to pray. We need to take a stand, not hate people, but we need to know our God, and, our, and then those who know their God shall do great exploits. Amen? So uh, I, was reading, I was reading a lot of stuff about warfare and generals, and there was this guy, some of you may know of him. I never heard of him. Uh, Mad Jack Churchill. Anybody here ever heard of him? He's a commander in the British Army. Of course you would, Leslie. Of course. And so, she, <laughs> but I never heard of him. And this guy, it's amazing. Look him up on Wikipedia. It's so interesting. In World War II, this guy was a British commander. He was crazy. They called him Mad Jack. He did not have any fear. He was brave and he was a conqueror. And he fought with a long bow. I had to look that up. It was this, this bow and arrow that's that's arch or something. <laughs> I couldn't think of the word. And so, and he had bagpipes. He was just British guy. Well, he was British, but he was Scottish. And what he would do is when he went to fight, he had a sword and he had his bagpipe. And he would play the bagpipes too before he would attack. 
And, and, and so one of the things that he said, any officer who goes into action without a sword is improperly dressed. Well, here we are, the church, we cannot go into battle improperly dressed without knowing the word of God, without knowing who we are, without knowing our rights. But when you look this guy up, I mean, he would play his bagpipes going into battle. He took out over 23 of the enemy just with his sword. But I believe it was the sound of a warrior, that, that authority that he knew who he was, that frightened the enemy. It was the Germans that he was coming against. And so it's just an amazing a story. And when I was looking him up, I thought, oh my God, that is who we need to be. That's who we are. We're not trying to get it. We have the spirit of God. You know that we have his DNA within us. And so there is an urgent call for us, the church to rise up. You're going to hear it over and over again, because that's just where we're at. We need to know that God wants us to exercise our authority. When we see things, the lawlessness that's out there, the transgender issue, the, 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 all the trash that they're trying to implement in the school system with sexual perversion. Are you kidding me? We have got to take a stand. We can't just say, isn't that terrible? We have to do something about it and even let our voices be heard, but we also have to pray. We also have to go to the schools and take a stand. That's what we have to do, okay? And so one of the things, well, actually, today what I want to talk about is uh, the dunamis power of God. And so we have power. There's a lot of power words that's in the Bible. And I love studying this stuff. So you've heard us talk about our authority, right? And so one of the words, and I'm going to bring out a lot of scriptures, dunamis power. Do we have that? Did you write that out? Okay. Peter's my secretary here. Okay, you can, you can get that. There you go. So, um, all right. I should have looked it over. Okay, that's, that's, that's not the one I wanted, but that's okay. All right, so, all right, maybe go to the next slide. Let's see. No, all right. All right, so, dunamis power. It means inherent power, the power of reproducing itself, from which we get the English word dynamo or dynamite. And this power has been placed within us. In Acts chapter 1-8, it says that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. That word power there is the dynamite power of the Holy Spirit. That's for each and every single one of us. Now, it has to get activated, but we all have it. It's not one is more power. I mean, you know, we have authority. We have greater authority because we've activated it. We've stepped out in faith and we've become a doer of the word, but we all have that authority, okay? And um, we have to, as an army, God is raising up an army and a company of believers who we all need to know our authority. I like your shirt, Anita, pray, right? You heard from God here. And uh, it's, we're, we're to be a prayer force of prophets, and apostles, evangelists, and uh, who and watchmen, intercessors that that know our God and, and that we will do great exploits. So, um, in Ephesians one nineteen and twenty, did you do that one, Peter? Oh, okay, all right. And then I have it also in the Amplified. So I have a mic we, down here, so be careful. Excuse me. I have a microphone down here, so be careful. I know I should have taken it with me. <laughs> All right, so Ephesians 1, 19 and 20 says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places? In the Amplified, uh, it says here, And so that you will begin to know what the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his active spiritual power, that's the dunamis, in us who believe. Isn't that awesome? I'm going to read that again. So that you will begin to know what the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his active spiritual power, his dunamis that's in us who believe. These are in accordance with the working, with the energia, that working there is energia, of his mighty strength. And so mighty there is iscus, and strength there is kratos power. So God is there's, there's all four words. They have a central thrust of strength, power, and might. That's what he's given us. All right? He, he didn't leave us wet, he, without power. He didn't leave us without weaponry. I was reading a scripture. I don't know if I wrote it out here. And um, 
I think it was in 1 Samuel 13. Yeah, the Philistines removed the blacksmiths so the Israelites couldn't make swords or weapons for their army. Sounds like what they're trying to do in our nation, take our weapons away. But that's also what the enemy does because he knows that um, removing weapons makes you what? Weak, without power. We have power here in the church. And what is it? The word of God. It's worship, it's praying in the spirit, it's declaring the word, it's taking a stand on the word, it's walking in faith. That's who we are. We're not this fringe you know, group of people that, that are so weird. No, we're a people that know our God and we will do great exploits and we have done great exploits and we have seen so many miracles. God has never called us to be weak. He's never called us to be passionless. The zeal of the Lord has consumed us and that's the way we have to be a people of passion. A people who know their God, that I'm not backing down. We, we heard Jermaine Copeland. How many of you read that book, Prayers That Avail With Much? Remember all her scriptures, right? I mean, here she is, 88 years of age. She was preaching in, at the meeting we were at. And, and I mean, she was a hoot. She was a powerhouse. This, this, the word of God doesn't slow you down. If anything, it gives you the energy of the Holy Spirit. And she made a statement. She said she was getting aggravated like when she would go into places and they would want to take her temperature. And she says, I am 88 years old. Don't you think by now I know if I have a fever? You know, <laughs> but I mean, isn't that true? You know, but, but let me tell you, she was preaching the gospel. And taking a stand on the word, 88 years of age, because she has seen what God has done. The power of the word, the dynamite, dunamis power of God that is in each and every one of us. And I really want to encourage you all to read the book of Ephesians. Just meditate on it. It is so good. In Ephesians, it talks about him opening up the eyes of our understanding, that we will have a revelation knowledge of who we are. How many of us need revelation and strategy? But God is saying, but we're not asking him for it. We, we think it's just for that person or that person or they're a little too much. No, no, you're either hot or you're cold, honey. You have to have that zeal of the Lord. That's what he wants us to have. That's why the church, that's why the, the carnal church or the woke church is not happening. It, what they, you know, with them not taking their stand, it's, it's, it's like our responsibility to pray for what's out there. That's what the scripture says. And that, you know, what, I don't want New Jersey going down the toilet. It's up to us to pray. So, amen. So in Ephesians, it says, I'm going to read it again, so that you will begin to know what is the immeasurable, unlimited. What does unlimited mean? Unlimited. (laughs) And surpassing greatness of his active spiritual power, dunamis, dynamite, explosive power working in us who believe. Do you believe? We have this. This is for all of us. Now, don't you see the strategy of the enemy to lie to us all the time? You're, you're no good. You're stupid. You're not going to amount to anything. You're a loser. You're a failure. You're, that's his strategy plan. But that's where when you know the word, when it's so in you, you, you come out of agreement and say, you know what? Sometimes it's so real. You know, I know when I've gotten attacked, that lie feels so real, right? But it's like, no, I don't care what I'm feeling because my feelings aren't always right but the word of God is. Lord, I know what your word says. And your word says, I'm a conqueror. Your word says, I have dynamite power within me. So I reject that lie. See, that's that's warring. That's how we fight. And it happens to all of us. All of us. And, you know, don't think when you get to a certain age or you're in the Lord's X amount of years that it still doesn't happen. It happens. And he tries to ambush you or catch you off guard. That's why we need to daily stay in the presence of the Lord. Daily talk to God. Daily pray. It's our privilege. So, Um, So as I said, the scripture incorporates all four of the Greek words for power into one single verse, all right? So I want you to remember, we have dunamis. I didn't put exousia. That's another one. I'll talk about that in a minute. But we have the energia. Holy Spirit gives us energy. Man, Bill Hammond, was uh, Bishop Bill was preaching, and he's doing this like we're doing this. You know, we're doing warfare and listening to the music. And, you know, we're, we're tra- you're warring. And this, I'm thinking, when is this guy going to stop? Like, because we were up there with him. And I'm thinking, Mama Mia. But he just kept going and going and going. That's the energy of Holy Spirit. 35 minutes. 35 minutes. Yeah. I mean, he didn't stop. He didn't say, well, you know, I am 88 and, and I need some help standing up here. Because he had to keep sitting down on his chair. But, but he kept going. Because he has that fire in him. 
that fires, that word of God is like a hammer that, that shatters the strongholds and the lies of the enemy that's over our lives. Holy Spirit, you know, wants us to, to see the bigger picture. Devil wants us to limit us. Oh, well, things didn't happen yet. Then what do we do? We all get discouraged. We get like, we get boxed in. And, and Lisa had the word about the prison doors opening up. It's not just for, for prodigals, for all of us, right? And so in 2 Peter 1, 3 through 4, in a New Living Translation, it says, it says, by his divine power, God has given us everything. Thank God, you did it right. God has given us everything we need for, a, for living a godly life. Do you see that? God has given us everything. I can't tell you how many times I have to go back to that scripture and meditate on it. Because a lot of times you don't think like it's there, right? So God, you have given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable us to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. I'm telling you, God has given us everything we need for a God, to live a godly life. Listen, you may think, I don't have that strength, I don't have that power, I don't. baloney, you have it. He's given it to us. That's where we have to tap into it. See, when you have revelation of something, when you get the word in you and you understand that you have that, it's in us, it's for all of us, then, then that's how you war with the enemy. If you don't know it, then you, you get messed up and you're stuck. So we have the spirit of a conqueror within us, right? So God is awakening his armor within us, right? And so we have the power to overcome. And now we all are familiar with this scripture in 2 Timothy 1.7 in the Amplified. It says, For God did not give us the spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craven and cringing and fawning fear, but he has given us a spirit of what? Power. What kind of power? Do you have dunamis power? Yeah. You're not trying to get it? Uh-uh. And of love and of calm and well-balanced mind, discipline and self-control. Let me tell you something. What's the lie of the enemy? I don't have self-control in that area. That's a baloney lie. We have it. So he's saying here, I've given you power. Take understand I died on a cross for us, you, me, to walk in this power, this dunamis power of my love. Whose love? Of love. It's not talking about our love. It's talking about the love that God has for us. His agape love that he has. He's given us that dunamis power and love. Sound mind. See, that's why it's important to read the word. When you have anxiety and you're not really you know, really pressing into the word and you're not doing your thing here, I'm telling you right now, that's where you get out of sorts. It's the word of God as you meditate on the word. I remember when I started to really get into this, I used to think, how is this going to help me? You know, it doesn't make sense, right? But that's the power of the word of God. And, I, you know, and I've shared this before. I mean, I always struggle with a lot of fear and panic. So I'm not minimizing when we are struggling in this. I just know what and how the power of God that helped me get through it. And still to this day, I'm really careful. I'm careful about what I watch on TV. I'm, well, I don't even watch TV because there's nothing worth watching on TV. But, but um, you know, uh, certain movies or, you know, what I'm listening to or certain things about the news or who's getting attacked, I, I have to protect myself. I, I can't because then my mind starts going, right? And so we have to watch out for ourselves and, and guard our minds. So he's given us that power. You have the power, the dunamis power. You don't have to yield to fear. You don't have to yield to that lie. I mean, now all these pandemics, now they're saying more pandemics. Now they got the monkeypox or this pox. Are you kidding me? You're going to keep bringing that. Are we going to yield to that? I'm not saying that we're not careful. We're not using our head. But sometimes, you know, that's an excuse too. Do you believe the word or you don't? Do you, do you have Psalm 91 memorized in your spirit, man, or don't you? And so, again, it's like the Lord saying, prove me with my word. I am not going to allow, and I know it's going to sound crazy, the world to dictate how I'm going to live. The word is going to have final say over how I'm living. Not what Fauci or any of those guys are saying. Are you kidding me? So, you know, again, I, I, I bless doctors. I go to them. I encourage you to get your checkups. I encourage you to do your thing there. I am not talking against that because someone I, I've shared that said, oh, we don't believe in doctors. 
we, of course we believe in doctors. But what I'm saying is I'm not going to allow the fear to control me. I'm not doing that. That's why we have to meditate on the word. And it's easy to get, I, we were down, there was a picture down the shore of some person swimming in the ocean with a mask on. Listen, come on. All right. That's crazy. Now, I'm not putting anyone down from wearing a mask, but I'm, I mean, you're alone in the ocean swimming. You're going to wear a mask? That, but, but see, that's what the media does. No, I'm serious. That's what the media does. We have that's to protect what, the sharks from COVID. <laughs> true. That's what the media does. The media wants to frighten you into this. So listen, you want to wear your mask? Go for it. I'm, not, I, I'm just saying it, it gets overboard. It gets crazy, right? All right. Oh, Jesus, help us. Anyway, so God has given us his energy. He's given us his power. He's saying, listen, you have my, my zeal in you. You have the power of God. You have the dunamis power of God. In Hebrews 4.12, and he amplified, it says, for the word that God speaks is alive. Ah, good. For the, for the word that God speaks is alive and full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than, two, than any two-edged sword penetrating to the dividing line of the breath of life, soul, and the immortal spirit and of joints and marrow of the deepest part of our nature, exposing and, exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of our heart. Do, do, I'm going to read that again, but do you see why the enemy would want you not to read the word? Here's what the word does. It's alive. It's powerful. It's breathing. The breath of God is there. It's Jesus. Jesus is the word. It makes it active, operative, energizing. It's effective. That's why when you meditate on the word, it shifts you. It shifts your mindset. I can wake up and be all like fearing or, you know, you get in those funky moods and you might feel a little sad that day or depressed. And then you start reading the word and worshiping it shifts. That's the supernatural power of God. It happens to us all, but don't get stuck there. All right. And so he says here that God wants us to have a great awakening. God wants us to meditate on the word. He wants us to see ourselves through the eyes of the Lord. He wants us to see ourselves as warriors, as people that, that know their God, that, that know their boundaries, that know our place. In John 10, 28, in the Amplified, it says, and I give them life eternal, that they should never lose it or perish throughout the ages. To all eternity, they shall never by any means be destroyed. And no one is able to snatch them out of my hand. And that word, that snatch them out of my hand, means it's iscus, and it means to hold on. And it's God's holding power. It means that God's holding power on us. There's a military force. There, see, we have to understand we have the force of God residing within us. In 1 John 2, 14, in the Amplified, it says, I write to you, fathers, because you've come to know and recognize me, conscious of and understand him who has existed from the beginning. And I write to you, young men, because you're strong. That's iscus. You're, and, and women, and vigorous. And the word of God is always abiding in you. Listen, that's how you're going to be strong, because the word of God is abiding in you, all right? And that's that holding power. Literally, that word, ishkis, I, I hope I'm saying it right, means a, a, to possess something. Uh, God's holding on power, military power in his force, okay? That's what the word does. That's what we have within us. That is incredible to me. Again, that's the energy, enem, enemy's plan is to get this, especially the young people, this is so boring. I'm not, I'm going to, I'm not just focusing on you guys. You know, it's boring. God's power, you know, this is like, you know, for older people. -uh. The sooner you get this in you, the better, right? And so his word is always abiding in you, in your hearts. And it says here in the scripture, you have been victorious over the wicked one. He's speaking past tense. He's saying we're already victorious. We've been victorious. That's why we got to get that word in us, right? And so then one of the other power words is kratos. And it sounds like something Superman would say, right? Kratos power, manifested power, inherent power, dominion, strength, force to perfect and complete, power or rule of God. Man, that's, what, that's the other word that he has. Listen, in Luke 10, 19, it says here, well, I'll give you a scripture for that in a minute, but in, in 10, 19, it says, behold, I've given you authority and power 
to trample upon serpents and scorpions and physical and mental strength and ability and over all power that the enemy possesses and nothing in any way shall harm you. Now, now the one word for, another word for power is exosia. And I don't know, I, I did have it up there. Okay, so it's delegated. You know, a policeman, I remember uh, Kenneth Hagen always sharing this example. A policeman has authority to stop traffic. Not the power, but he has authority. We have the power of God backing us for that exousia authority. You get it? So when we take authority over something, we have the power of God backing us, just like a policeman, because he has a silver government backing him. When he tells the traffic to stop an 18-wheeler, it has to stop. Why? Because of the government that's behind him. Well, same for us, all right? So we have the ability or strength with which one is induced influence and or right privilege, power of rule or government, and it's also the power of judicial decisions. I mean, do you see how powerful this is? Are you getting this or is it just me? I mean, we're good? Okay. So he's given us power to trample on serpents and scorpions over the enemy, over the lie of the enemy, over what has the enemy stolen from you? Does he lie to you? Have you been battling illness? I mean, listen, there are casualties, no doubt. That doesn't mean that we're a failure. But is that going to stop me? I'm going to keep pressing on. I'm going to keep moving on. The word of God is powerful. We are a powerful people. And it's actually fun. Like when, you, when you're hearing the testimonies, when you see, like even in deliverance, you know, and you see the strategy, you see how people have gotten delivered and set free. When you see a prophetic word that comes down and, and the atmosphere changes or your region changes because of that. Do you understand that's for all of us? That's not just for a certain group of people. Now, we all have, there's different levels and, you know, uh, you know, that God has called us all to operate in, but are you even operating in what God has called you to operate in? All right? And so know that your prayers really are making a difference. When you're decreeing the word, it is causing breakthrough. Because a lot of times, I don't know about you, but sometimes, do you ever pray and think, is this making a difference? Right? Right? You know, because sometimes you're not seeing something shift right away and you get discouraged. But how many of us have seen miracles? How many of us have seen answers to prayer, right? So, I mean, listen, that's what God is saying to us. Now, we can't stay at this level. We're crossing a threshold, you know? And so, like I said earlier, when Pat came up, she was talking about Python. And what does that mean? The, the scripture does say in Ezekiel 21 that Python is at the threshold of the door when you want to cross over into a new, let's talk about getting a new job. Let's talk about, you know, uh, new relationships or whatever it is. There, there's that fear comes. The enemy tries to stop you. And, and what does it do? It's now, we get the picture of a snake. That's what a python is. But a python just uh, tries to strangle you, t- tries to uh, take the breath out of you, to c- get you to be weary, to feel withdrawn, to feel disappointed. But joy is, is, is a, it's not an emotion. We choose to rejoice. We choose to have that joy. You can choose to be sad or you can choose to have joy. And let me tell you something, I'd rather have joy because sadness brings depression. And then we can sit there and wallow and think, why does everything always happen to me? And, you know, that old song. But, how, I mean, it, it'll keep you in a down place. So that's the thing. We want to choose to rejoice. And let me tell you something. There was a season that the Lord told me to get up, and it, was so, it sounded so stupid. But he said to me, I want you to get up every morning around 5 a.m., and I want you to rejoice. I want you to just have joy and, and read the word and rejoice. And I thought, five o'clock in the morning. Uh, and not only that, I was going through a really, 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 really difficult season. And I was, there was nothing to have joy about as far as I was concerned. And so the one morning I just got up and I said, Lord, you got to be kidding me. And I thought, so stupid. So I'm standing here in my kitchen and, I, and, I'm, and I started to go, ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Remember that we used to sing a song? Ha, 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 Well, I start doing that. And then it just cracked me up. And then I start doing salsa, and I start dancing around. I love salsa music to my Spanish friends. And so I start, and I'm telling you, it just cracked me up. And so it just shifted, you know? And so that's what I'm saying. We don't have to be so serious. God, listen, he is fun. He wants us to have joy. 
not be a sourpuss all the time. Yeah, yeah. You know, he wants, like, why would someone want to be attracted to someone like that, right? It's the joy of the Lord. And be honest and, and just know that God is, that the spirit of the Lord in us is liberty. It's freedom. And so in Matthew uh, 28, 18, and 20 in the voice, it says, Jesus came forward and addressed his beloved disciples. And the disciples don't know what to think or act or how to act. Nothing like this has ever happened before. Jesus, I am here speak now, I am here speaking with all authority of God who has commanded me to give you this commission. Go out and make disciples in all nations. Remember, he's giving us this authority, the exosia, that 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 power, that delegated authority. He said, he said, and I'm commanding, God has commanded me to give this to you, this commission. Go out and make disciples in all nations. Ceremonially, ceremonially wash them through baptism in the name of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, then disciple them. For them in the practices and postures that I've taught you and show them how to follow the commands I've laid down for you, and I will be with you day after day to the end of the urge, uh, age. And so authority is as strong as the power behind it, all right? And so that's powerful. He's, he's, he's commissioned us to be these people of power. The power behind, I read that. All right, in 1 John 4, 4, and it says, Little children, you are of God. You belong to him and have already defeated and overcome them, the agents of the Antichrist, because he who lives in you, you got to get this picture. He who lives in you is greater and mightier than him in the world. We have, the area, we have that authority to keep our, area, our, our school uh, free of, of sh uh, shootings. We have the authority to keep our area free of lawlessness and the attack. Do you understand? We have that authority. Greater is he that's in us. If we unite as a, as a force, as, as a group of people to pray with single eye focus about what we're praying for, do you understand what happens? So God is saying to us again, let me stir that thing up in you. See, we, have, we work with him. It's just not us doing it in our own strength. But he wants us to, to understand the damage that we make in the realm of the spirit. Do you understand? We, we are called to overthrow the works of darkness. That's, that's for all of us. We're called to pray for those that are, are releasing, you know, the government that's releasing all these crazy mandates, you know. And, and so we have to pray. Whether we like President Biden or not, we're called to pray for him. We're called to pray for this man's deliverance because he needs it. And so we need to pray for the government that's, that's shrouded with witchcraft out there because that's what's happening. It's contrary. It's so contrary to the word of God. So contrary. There's a small percentage of people who are in agreement, and it's the media that's shouting the loudest. That's owned by George Soros, as you know. But it's up to us to take a stand and say, uh-uh, not on my watch. Not on my watch. You're not going to have my kids. You're not going to have my family. That's why that's up there. We have that right to take a stand. And that's what they're doing. It's like, you know, like in socialism, what they want to let you do and, and think about how you're going to get your schooling for free. You're going to get this for free. You're going to get that for free. Then you become lazy, passionless people. And then the government owns you. That's not happening. We're not going to have them one more order. Not happening. But see, that's going to be where we have to rise up and pray. We have to say, we have that resolve within us. Say, mm, this is not the word of God. It's gone so far left. It's crazy. <clears throat> but we have to be angry about this. And so we have to say, Lord, you've called us to live here in this day and age for a reason. You know why? Because he knows we have the spirit of the living God within us. He knows that we are called to do great exploits. He knows that we know the word of God, that we are a fiery people. We are the fire of God. We're called to be fiery, passionate people of God, never to just be seat bench warmers or, you know, just to sit in our seat and just watch and spectate. My husband said that earlier. That's not who we are. When I got saved, that woman who mentored me, Sister Celeste, we called her, she was a powerhouse. She was in prison for eight years. She was a madam, but God set her free. And let me tell you, you did not mess with her. She was tough. But let me tell you something, the fire of God on her. She would preach in 44th and Broadway on top of a car with a bullhorn and call people out and prophesy over them, cast devils out of them. We saw angels. We saw deliverances. We saw healings. She, we preached in prison for three years. 
She was doing it, but I'm telling you, that, that my God, you saw but the, the fire, you saw all the people get delivered, you saw all the lives transformed. That's for all of us today. That's still in effect. But we have to, we have to be hungry. We have to be hungry people that say, uh-uh, I want it all. I want everything that God has for me. The sphere that you are influencing over, are you praying for them? Are you prophesying over them? Do you understand you have the power of God, the blood of Jesus, cast devils out of people? It's not just for a certain group of people. We, were, we didn't know half the stuff what we were doing, but, I mean, we would see things, and we heard about the power of the blood. We heard about, you know, taking authority over things. We heard about the word of God. I was new in this, and this guy was talking stupid stuff, and he came up to me, and he was just getting on my nerves. And so... I, you know, at that time, you know, I grew up in inner city, and, uh, you know, I took karate at the time. I know we renounced it. I repented for all that stuff. But anyway, um, I took, uh, and so he was getting a little smart, and, and he, he grabbed me, and he put me up against the wall, and I thought, honey, I thought, well, I'm going to apply the blood of Jesus, and if that doesn't work, I'm going to kick your little sorry butt, because <laughs> it's the truth. It's what I said, because he, he also was a little guy, you know, and he was... He was also drunk. He was high. Anyway, so, and when I, when I took authority over the blood of Jesus, um, he let me go and start screaming. And he doubled over. And Because I said, I bind that lustful spirit in you and I loose the power of the blood. He let me go and he, he, he bent over and he started screaming. I'm like, oh my God. I said, this works. But, but then I'm like, the blood, the spirit. I didn't know what I said that really did it, you know. But, but, you know, God met me where I was at. And I thought, oh, my Lord, this is so awesome. And, you know, we prayed for him afterwards. But, but you know, listen, God wants you to know you have that power. You cannot wait until you get everything. Like, I, I know the 44 books or, you know, the 66 books or I, I have everything memorized. That's important. But don't wait. Don't think that you have to get it all down before you can pray, before you step out. Now, again, now on the other side of the coin, you do have, you know, leadership that wants to train you and help you because there were a lot of issues that I ran into because I didn't know any better. We can help you with that. I used to teach a course on what not to do because I made so many mistakes. So, you know, I can help you with that. But anyway, so, you know, I want you to just get this today that you have God in you. You have the power of God and that the manifest power of God is in us. In Ephesians 2, 1 through 6, and I'm going to close, it says, the evil forces of this age to come have been arrayed against the purpose of God. They had, however, been baffled, listen, and overthrown, and the risen Lord had been enthroned far above them, ruling with the authority of the Most High. United with us, with the anointed one, and infuse, listen, our lifeless souls with life, even though we were buried under mountains of sin and saved us by his grace. He raised us up with him. Here, here, listen. He raised us up with him, seated us in heavenly realms with our beloved Jesus, the anointed, the liberating king. We are seated in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers, far above. We're not beneath. We're far above, Okay. The reviving Christ. We have been raised up and seated far above the enemy. So when you meditate in this whole book, it's just so awesome. When you study even your, um, the, the, you know, in Ephesians where it talks about the armor of God being strong in the Lord, you know, and having that Kratos power within us. That's what God is saying. Listen, it may seem unnatural to you, but do it. Do what the word of God is asking you. And so, I mean, you have uh, he wants to bless us. We're the ecclesia. We're God's instrument. He wants us to, to know that we can overthrow the rebellious, usurping powers that are out there. Because a lot of that's spiritual. Listen, this thing that's come so against uh, the government, the last regime, uh, you know, it's not about that individual. It, it, this is a spiritual war that's going on. H eat darkness, hating light, you know? And so we have to understand, I, I'm, I'm for the liberating king, whatever, whatever um, you know, party he stands for. I'm not either or. I'm going to be honest with you because they can be both corrupt. But, but listen, the failure of the church is that we've been dependent upon what's been out there. That has had in the past more of an influence than what this is saying, what God has for us. And that has to shift. 
And I know a lot of you here, that's your heart. Your heart is to take a stand. It's not that you've allowed the government to rule us. But that's not your heart. That's what I mean. So, so the Lord wants us to stand up. And, and he said to me, I want you to come up to a whole nother level. I want you to know that I'm on your side. If God be for us, who can be against us? And I want you to know you make a difference. I want everybody in here to know they make a difference. That is how important. Because you all have pieces we don't have. That's why even when people come and pray or, or release the word, it's important. We don't take that lightly. We all have, you know, you have stuff I don't have. I have stuff you don't have. And that's why the body, when we're working together and we're corporately in power and we understand, wait a minute, I might not feel it today. But see, God didn't say it's by your feelings you have power. It's by your feelings you touch God. It's by faith. Half, and half of us wouldn't even be here. You know how many times we don't feel? Who feels like coming to church every Sunday? I don't. <laughs> he does. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I don't feel like it. Right? Am I the only one? So, I mean, come on. Come on. All right. He's different. He's good. You're the only one. No, no. I saw some hand. I saw. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see it. There you go. Okay. You know, so we, listen, it happens at times, but if I went only by what I felt, half of us went, who feels like going to work all the time? Oh, Jesus, right? So, of course, he has to be different. But, but listen, we can't allow our feelings to control us. And so when, we, when we're praying and when we're believing God for that financial breakthrough, when we're believing God and calling that money in, we're told to do that. We're told, told to speak into that spirit realm and call it in, right? And decree that breakthrough, decree that miracle, decree favor. I mean, it's incredible. And I'm going to close with this because this, this was a real challenge. One time I was traveling overseas, and um, uh, we, you know, we all have... You know, because I'm traveling so much, I have a lot of status. I have a lot of miles. And we were going, I, I don't remember if we were going to Malaysia. I don't know where we were going. But I just remember that we had to change planes in Madrid. And everybody was in business class but me. And I thought, I am getting business class. And they said to me, it's booked. You can't get it. I said, Lord. And I really sensed that the Lord said, believe me for it. And you know, you have that agita going on. You're like, oh, you know, when you're trusting God for something. So I went to the ticket counter. I said, no, it's totally booked up. I said, well, Lord promised me. I went down to the gate, and uh, the guy said, um, no. And I, I just kept praying. I said, Lord, I know I heard you. And so I went down to the gate, and he said to me, no, it's, it's booked up. It's, you can't get a seat. And then all of a sudden, he said to me, wait a second. It looks like something's opening up. I said, that's my, that's my seat. <laughs> so... So what he said was, I said, can you book it? And at the time, American was aligning with um, uh, uh, one of the other airlines. No, it wasn't Continental, U.S. Air. And he said, I can't do anything right now. You have to call. I says, all right, well, how much is this going to cost me? And he says, like $300. I'm like, oh, brother. You know, because normally I get free upgrades. So I call up, and I said, listen, I just heard that one seat opened up. Would you hurry up and book it? And he did. And I said, well, how much is it going to cost me? He goes, $75. I'm like, all right. And the other ones had to pay a lot more money. I'm just saying. But, you know, but see, it was that, it was that, that tenacity of that pressing through. And, and it was like, I felt like my insides were getting stretched. I know it sounds silly for a seat, but you know, when you're warring over, over something, you know, and it could be a little itty bitty thing. It could be a major thing. But if you haven't been able to break through in the little things, how are you going to get the bigger things, right? So I want to encourage you. He wants to give us the desires of our heart. He said, oh, look at her. She's talking about first class. Well, you try flying overseas and going to minister and not laying down in a bed and relaxing, right? So, uh, but, but the Lord is saying to us, listen, even he, he says, I bottle up your tears. And I had the hairs upon your head numbered. For some of you, he can't find the hairs upon your head, but he does have the hairs upon your head. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Anyway, so stand up. Come on. <laughs> God is good. We were singing that today. God is so good. And he's calling us out of the grave. He's calling us out of areas of our heart where it's been dry. He's saying, you don't need to stay that way. You are conquerors. The Bible says you're more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens you. Oh, amen, amen, amen. I didn't know if he was going to come up here or do something, right? 
Anyway, so Lord, we just, we just thank you that we have, we have resurrection life within us. Lord, the spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead lives and resides within each of us in here. Lord, I thank you that you are commissioning us to heal the sick, cleanse the leper, cast out devils, and raise the dead. You are commissioning us. You've been commissioning us, but today we're formalizing it that each and every one of us are commissioned. We lose the power, the dunamis power of God, the exousia, the iscus, the, uh, the kratos power over each and every one of us, oh God. Show. We're, Lord, where we will not settle for status quo. But, Father, we thank you that we see ourselves through your eyes, not our lens, not the devil's voice, through your voice, God, that we are powerful, mighty people in Christ Jesus because of what's in us and who you are in us because you love us and you're calling us to move forward and to press through and cross over that threshold and not allow the enemy to hold us back. We say no to that. But, Father, we will go beyond. And the Spirit of the Lord is saying, go beyond. The Lord is saying to us, press in and get and get eyeball to eyeball with me. Allow me face-to-face -face encounter to give you weaponry of war. As you are intimate, as you are in that close proximity with me, the Lord's saying. As you are there, many need that strategy. Or you're asking God for direction. You're asking him for clarity. And the Lord says that now is the time. Don't allow your fears, your limitations, your understanding of things to always hold you back here and get the strategy. So Lord, I just thank you that there's explosive power in us. There's that revving up of your power within us, oh God, as we step out and are activated and we activate it to a whole nother level. I'm telling you, God has given assignments today and the Lord is saying, step out. The Lord is saying there's people and there's businesses that you've been having your eye on. The Lord says now is the time to step into that business. The Lord is also saying now is the time to also Go and lay hands on the sick. The Lord says, you've been afraid, but you know God's been speaking to you. The Lord says, just do it. Just go out and lay hands on people. There are businesses that God is resurrecting right now. You've been through a dry spell in your business, and the Lord is saying right now, there's resurrection life coming to your business right now. And if your business has been struggling, come up here, because the Lord is going to lay hands on you. But the Lord is saying he's loosing resurrection life over businesses right now. In Jesus' name, Lord, I just thank you, Father, for the deliverance anointing. Lord, we know that deliverance is an end-time ministry. And, Lord, I loose that, that commissioning for deliverance over your people right now in Jesus' name, that they will lay hands on the sick, they will speak to that thing, they will look at it eyeball to eyeball and cast that thing out in Jesus' name. So, Lord, we just thank you for your resurrection power. We thank you. In Jesus' name. And for those of you who need to leave, we bless you to move on. But I'm telling you, even in um, the schools, the kids going to schools, Lord, we just pray for your favor. And Lord, we just silence the voice that would try to get them in a, in a place of, of despair and defeat. In Jesus' name, we just bind that spirit that would try to get them to have a socialist mindset. We cut that off in Jesus' name. We pray for a favor that they will be the shining light, not what the world tries to present to them. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you that there is abundance here. I just say, I keep hearing the Lord. He's saying he's, he's loosing his abundance over us, spirit, soul, and body. So Holy Spirit, we just thank you for the strategy for businesses. We thank you for the strategy. Oh, I just heard that so clearly of resurrection life. Lord, I lose resurrection life over businesses right now. In Jesus' name, we break the lid off of the businesses that the enemy has tried to squelch has tried to cut back on your life and cut back on you and your businesses, we cut that off now in Jesus' name.